Uh, good morning. This is lecture 23, Music and Text. And the subject today is German Romantic Leader. Lead in German simply means song. Leader is plural songs. But um, in, the, in classical music, lead or leader specifically refers to a genre of Germ German art songs from the 19th century. Um, leader were very popular in the Romantic era. They were simply settings for voice and piano. So it's a duet, piano and voice duet. And it's important to remember that the relationship between the piano and voice is very balanced. Uh, often both the vocal parts and the piano parts are often very demanding. So it's a very balanced relationship. It's not simply homophonic where you have piano accompanying the voice. Um, the, the piano and voice are interactive. The leader are often thematic uh, based on poems or a series of poems and or programmatic. And as I previously said, music is often set to poetry. Um, so the uh, Romantic era poetry or uh, famous poets before that era, the, the poems were used and set to music. Um, historically, the Germans uh, lagged behind the Italians in terms of singing. Uh, we know the very strong tradition of uh, opera in Italy. And, uh, but the leader can be traced to some um, movements in, um, in Germany. Um, during the Middle Ages, there were um, what were called Mainer singer, sanger, Mainer sanger, who were courtly singers, um, um, troubadours basically, who went from court to court. Um, in the Protestant Reformation, we it, it effectively took the singing away from the church and the monks and gave the singing tradition back to the con congregation. And of course, the Protestant Reformation began in Germany. There was a tradition of what was called house music um, in the 18th and 19th century. And house music or house musique um, is just exactly what it sounds like. It was uh, popular music um, that was um, part of middle class, the growing middle class life. And so in the 19th century, the piano, because of manufacturing, Industrial Revolution um, was becoming a middle class instrument or an instrument for the growing middle class. And um, a lot of the songs um, um, in the house music category were homophonic arrangements of German folk songs. So we skip up to the Romantic era. And uh, the Romantic era was characterized by extravagance and grandiose gestures. So things um, got very big. Symphonies got big. Orchestras got huge. Um, the, the orchestral works got longer and longer. But then there was also the movement the other way for miniaturized pieces. And Franz Schubert uh, was one of the individuals um, who was instrumental in the development of Lieder. He wrote actually over 600 Lieder. And um, he created what became known as the Song Cycle. A Song Cycle is exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a cycle of songs um, that are thematically linked and tell a story or um, treat the, um, the development uh, of a single um, theme. And it says here, he died not at the age of three, but at the age of 30. So um, throughout his life, he composed eight symphonies, 15 string quartets, 21 piano sonatas, seven masses, and four operas, and over 600 liters. So he was very, very prolific in his short lifetime. Erl Kunich is his opus one. Opus means work. And this, so this was his first published work. 
and this was written in 1815 when he was 17 years old. And Irokunik is a complete drama in a short form. It's based on a poem by a famous German poet, Johann Wolfgang van Goethe, and the theme is death and the supernatural. And a lot of people in the Romantic era were very much uh, fascinated by the supernatural. The story in Urokunig and the characters are all depicted with musically diverse treatments. And it's written for piano and male tenor voice. And again, there's an equal and complementary role between the voice and the piano. Um, for the voice, it's sung by a single male tenor voice who actually sings four different parts. Um, and there's the part of the narrator, part of a young boy, part of his father, and the part of the elf king, the Ural Kunig. Um, the narrator um, begins the piece, uh, so the narr narrator is just starting uh, the story and finishing the story. The young boy, um, the tone of the young boy, he's, uh, he's sick and he's, he's dying and uh, he's frantic uh, and panicked and um, hysterical almost. The father um, is, has uh, his melody and his voice is low, so he's um, comforting and reassuring. And the elf king is, is very creepy, um, very graceful and ominous. So not only do the vocal styles change, but also the melodies um, change. And for the Elf King, um, he wrote a very simple folk melody um, to sort of um, play down the, the ominous and the evil aspect of the Elf King. Um, the piano accompaniment, again, I have accompaniment in quotations because it's really more of a balanced part. It's actually a very demanding part to play. Um, throughout, the piano rhythmically simulates a horse at full run um, and supports each character as the voice has changed, so its style changes. It builds this ominous tension um, that goes along with the story. And the piano accompaniment uh, at the very end cuts out completely just before the final cadence. So all of these <clears throat> elements go hand in hand with the story. Um, this is the original poem here of the Elf King um, and a translation. Um, we start out with the narrator who reitet so spät durch Nacht und Wind es ist der Vater mit seinem Kind er hat den Knaben wohl in dem Arm Er fast in sicher, er hält im warm. So he's, who's writing so late? Um, th through the uh, night and wind. It, it is the father with his, with his child. He holds the boy um, uh, firmly in his arms, or, or holds him tightly, and he, and he holds him warm. So, um, that's the um, narrator. And then we, we hear the voice of the father. My son, why do you cover your face in such fear? And the son uh, answers, do you see the elf king father? He's near, the king of the elves with crown and train. So the, so the idea is why is the boy afraid of the elf king? And he's afraid of him because the belief is that the elf king is the harbinger of death. And if the elf king touches you, then you will die. So the, the boy is sick and he's afraid that the elf king is coming after him. But his father is reassuring, my son, the mist is on the plain. It's just a streak of mist. And then we hear the voice of the elf king. Um, and he is, he's very nice. Um, and he's singing this folk melody. Du liebes Kind, komm gay with mir. Um, you lovely child, come go, come away with me. Um, Gar schöne Spiele, spiel ich mit, I'll play pretty games with you. Um, 
Mark Bunte Blumen sind an dem Strand, uh, on the shore, um, on the shoreline is, are, are pretty flowers. And meine Mutter hat man gülden Gewand. My mother has many golden uh, um, ropes. Now that really freaks the boy out, and so he's even more panic. Um, mein Vater, mein Vater, don't you don't you hear um, what the elf king is uh, is uh, talking to me? And and the father just says, "Oh, be calm." Um, Mein Kind, um, it's just the leaves in the wind at night. So they're on this horse and it's, and it's night and they're riding wildly through the forest trying to get home. Um, and um, the son's sick and he's panicked and the father is trying to um, reassure him. And then we hear the Elf King again. Vils feine Knabe du mit mir gay. Uh, oh, um, you lovely boy. Um, Will you go with me? Uh, my daughters um, are, are waiting, uh, are already waiting. And they have, um, um, they're, they're going to do the nightly dance and they will, um, or um, the nightly round. And they will um, rock you and dance and sing to you there. Um, and th this really freaks the, the, the boy out even more. Mein Vater, mein Vater, don't uh, cease du dich dort. Can't you not see uh, the elf king's daughter in the, in the mist? Um, to, um, yeah, in the, in the gloom. Um, and, he, and the father says, mein Sohn, mein Sohn, I, I, I see it well enough. It, it's just um, the... Um, the old uh, willow trees, gray, the old gray willow trees. Now the elf king really amps it up. Ich liebe dich. I love you. Um, um, your comeliness or your your beauty um, allures me. And um, and if un bist du nicht willig, so brauch ich Gewalt. If you don't come willingly, I will take you by force. Okay. Mein Vater, mein Vater, again, now the boy. He's, he's grabbing my arm. Um, um, and um, he has done me uh, harm. Um, and then we, we finally go to the narrator. Dame Vater um, uh, uh, shudders, um, he rides like the wind, um, he holds in his arm the, the groaning child, um, and um, he reaches the, the, the hof, the house, um, with, uh, with, um, with sadness and dread, and then in seinen Armen das Kind war tot. In the child, he um, in his arms, the the child was dead. Um, so you can see the poetic form here. Der Vater grausitz, er reitet geschwind, er hält in Armen das Axende Kind, er reicht den Hof mit Mühe und Not, in seinen Armen das Kind war tot. Okay, the end. I found a really cool animated version of this. It just came out um, and uh, it's on YouTube. And so I'm going to play it here for you now. Here's the, the piano part, simulating this horse at a full run.
I was the narrator. The father. And now the boy. the Elf King. He sounds sweet, but he's not. Okay, so that's the Elf King, a little movie in a, in a short form. You see how easy that was to animate too. Now the other German leader composer um, that is really um, associated with the leader is Schumann. So we have uh, Schubert and Schumann, and these two are often mentioned together. Um, they were contemporaries. Schubert was uh, born a little earlier and died earlier than Schumann. Uh, Robert Schumann had a, um, an early career as a pianist. Um, however, he switched to composition. Um, he was a concert pianist, um, but he had an injury to his right hand. and event Evidently, he had invented some sort of finger stretching device to help stretch his fingers so he could reach wider intervals on the piano and it, it crippled him um, so he couldn't play at all with his right hands uh, he wrote uh, a lot of large works for piano but he's probably best known for his leader um, and uh, he also wrote a, a lot of pieces for left hand only um, he could only play with his left hand and a lot of these one-handed pieces um, were played and were popular among uh, people that were uh, in the military that had lost uh, one arm or the other um, in, in, some, in a military um, in the war. Um, 
So the, he's very well known for those one-handed pieces as well. Um, he wrote in um, Song Cycles, again, um, Song Cycles are a series of songs that were, short songs that were intended to be sung one after the other because they tell a story, a story or purvey a theme. Um, however, individual songs or certain selections from song cycles are often chosen and sung separately. So these um, the leader are seen as miniatures. Um, one of his cycles uh, was written in 1840 um, is the Dichter Liebe. Dichter means poet, so poet's love, basically. And it's a cycle of 16 poems um, written by another German poet, Heinrich Heine. Um, and he selected uh, these poems from the works of Heine and set them to music. Um, and they tell a, um, a story um, uh, of a relationship that is kind of a, um, a downward spiral, a psychological digression of a relationship. So at the beginning of a relationship, there's lots of, of hope and there's lot, lots of optimism. And then at the end, disillusion, disillusionment and despair. So throughout the 16 poems or songs, leader, things get worse and worse and worse and worse. And this is part of a very prolific year, uh, 1840, uh, where he married Clara Wieck and uh, he had, during this year, he had written um, 150 love songs. And this is often dubbed the song year. So the first example, the first song in the cycle of uh, Dichterliebe is, um, is Im wunderschönen Monat Mai, in the wonderfully lovely month of May. A leader are often named by the first line um, of the lead so and um, and this one is as well and you can see this is a very optimistic type of a poem um, it's it's short in the wonderfully lovely month of May when all the buds were bursting then it was that in my heart love broke through and it's a strophic song so there's two strophes in the wonderfully lovely month of May when all the birds are singing then it was I confess to her my longing and desire. Again, notice the balanced relationship between the piano and the voice. Okay, and you notice the balanced relationship um, between the piano part is fairly basic in this and doesn't mean that it's not important. It's supposed to really um, add to the effect of the song. So this is the first song. We're going to skip to the last song. 
Now the the songs in the middle just get darker and worse and worse as as the relationship goes poorly, I guess we could say, very poorly. And the Germans uh, and the Romantic composers uh, in general really liked a lot of drama. Uh, we know that from the um, from the opera. The last one, the Alten Busen Lieder. Um, literally the old bad songs. Um, this has been translated to the, the hateful songs of times past, but literally the the Alten, the old Busen means bad songs. The old bad songs. Um, you can really see a reverse in the mood um, um, in this. Um, and um, you can kind of see the mood change in here. And what's really interesting about this is after the singing is over, the piano continues to play. And there's a, a, a reason for this. Um, the Alten Busen Lieder, the hateful songs of time past. Um, the hateful brutal dreams let's now have them buried fetch up a, the great coffin I've got a lot to put in just what I won't yet say the coffin must be bigger than the great cask of Heidelberg this is a great cask of beer a giant cask where beer is made and then fetch a beer not a, a beer to drink but a, a burial beer a platform boards that are strong and thick they must be longer than the river bridge at Mainz and fetch me two twelve giants who must be stronger than St. Christopher the great statue at the Cathedral of Cologne on the Rhine. It is they that must haul the coffin and sink it into the sea for a great coffin like that deserves a great grave. Do you know why the coffin then has to be so huge and heavy? I sank my love, yes, and my grief in it. So his his love was so great and, uh, and so big and his grief so strong that he had to build this huge coffin and, and sink it in the ocean. And then after this last line, the piano continues on for a while. And you really have this idea of this giant coffin slowly sinking in, in the deep sea down to the bottom of the sea.
It may be a little bit difficult to hear um, that, but I provided the links in Blackboard for you. So you can definitely listen to each of these individually, and I encourage you to do so. Um, the whole point of this lecture and the next lecture is to talk about complex relationships between music and text. And we already have studied programmatic music where we know that music has this ability to very strongly uh, present and suggest ideas and emotions. When you add words to that, you sort of heighten the impact uh, when you add music and words. So you have both working together. And the German Romantic leader did this very, very effectively. Again, the, the whole idea is that these are balanced settings for voice and piano. Now, all the examples we listened to um, used male singers. However, uh, these could be sung by anyone, uh, any of the four voices, alto, tenor, bass, or um, soprano, uh, and they often are. Uh, there is huge repertoire of German leader, and very common to um, to hear excerpts uh, from leader um, in concert and chamber music settings. So I've said that the music and the text have a complex relationship. It, it's it's interactive, and the the combination of the two kind of transcends both. Uh, the text adds to the music and the music adds to the text. So there are musical and extra musical elements at work here. We'll continue a discussion of music and text in our next lecture on Tuesday. Have a good weekend.